The Super Kamiokande Detector is a machine half a mile underground. It is equipped with 11,146 photomultiplier tubes of 19.5 inches diameter. These tubes are crucial for detecting the Cherenkov radiation produced when particles move faster than light in water, allowing for the study of various neutrino interactions and other even more important discoveries. But before finding out what the greatest discovery is, which will flip the world of physics upside down, let's break down why such a complex machine exists. The Super K is not the first of its kind. The original Kamiokande, Kamioko Nuclein Decay Experiment, was a smaller detector that started operation in 1983. The main person credited with the development of the Kamiokande and its successor is Koshiba Masatoshi. His vision was to create a detector sensitive enough to observe neutrinos from the sun and from cosmic ray interactions in the atmosphere, which could open a new window into the workings of the universe. In 1987, Kamiokande detected neutrinos from a supernova SN1987A, a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way. This observation demonstrated the potential of neutrino astronomy. It also underscored the need for a larger and more sensitive detector to capture such rare events, leading to the construction of Super Kamiokande. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please give it a like. The Super Kamiokande was designed to be a much more sensitive detector due to its size and the number of photomultiplier tubes, or PMTs. The increased volume of water allowed for a greater chance of neutrino interactions, and the large number of PMTs provided comprehensive coverage to detect the faint Cherenkov radiation. Koshiba's pioneering work laid the foundation for the field of neutrino astronomy and led to his receipt of the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2002. So how does this thing work exactly? Let's say you are at a pool and you see someone swimming underwater. If the pool were completely still, and you had a way to detect ripples in the water, you could tell where the swimmer is and how fast they're moving based on the ripples they create. The Super Kamiokande detector works somewhat similarly, but instead of detecting ripples in water, it's designed to detect flashes of light produced by particles moving through water. Cherenkov radiation is analogous to the sonic boom you hear when a jet flies faster than the speed of sound. Just like the sound barrier, there is a kind of light barrier in materials. In a vacuum, nothing can go faster than the speed of light. However, the speed of light is slower in water than it is in a vacuum. When a charged particle, like those produced when a neutrino interacts with a particle in water, moves through water faster than light can travel in water, it emits a cone of blue light. This is Cherenkov radiation. The Super Kamiokande detector uses water as a medium because when neutrinos, which are extremely light and elusive particles, pass through it and interact with the water molecules, they can create charged particles that move faster than the speed of light in water. The detector is lined with thousands of sensitive PMTs that capture this faint blue light. To understand this with a simple parallel, imagine someone running through a foggy street at a night with a flashlight. As they run, they disturb the fog and create a visible track that can be seen from a distance. In the case of Super K, the fog is the water, the runner is the charged particle created by a neutrino interaction, and the flashlight is the Cherenkov radiation. The PMTs act as observers stationed all along the street, looking for the faint glow to pass by. When multiple PMTs detect the light, scientists can determine the direction the particle came from and some of its properties, such as its energy. This information helps scientists learn more about the neutrino that created the particle, including its type and where it came from. By looking at the patterns of light detected, researchers can infer the presence of neutrinos, study their properties and gain insights into the fundamental processes of the universe. The use of water is critical because it's transparent, dense enough to facilitate interactions and can be purified to be free of other particles that could create background noise. But this is not the craziest thing about the Super K. Scientists hope most to discover decaying protons, a phenomenon predicted mathematically but never observed physically. Proton decay is a hypothetical form of radioactive decay in which the proton decays into lighter subatomic particles. The existence of proton decay is predicted by several grand unified theories in particle physics, 
which attempt to unify the strong nuclear force with the weak nuclear force and electromagnetism. Detecting proton decay would be a monumental discovery, because it would provide evidence for these theories and imply that matter is not stable, but will eventually decay over immense time scales. However, protons are incredibly stable, and their predicted half-life is so long, it's far greater than the age of the universe that observing their decay is a significant experimental challenge. This is where the Super Kamiokande comes in. Its design allows it to be sensitive to the rare and subtle event that could indicate proton decay. The detector is located about a thousand meters underground to shield it from cosmic rays, which could create false signals and mask the rare events of proton decay. If a proton in the water were to decay, the decay products like positrons and pions would travel through the water at speeds greater than the speed of light in a pattern that is characteristic of proton decay. To date, no definitive evidence of proton decay has been found, which has helped to set lower limits on the proton's half-life, pushing it to timescales much longer than previously thought. This, in turn, helps physicists refine their theories and understanding of the fundamental force and stability of matter in the universe. So far, the Super Kamiokande has not been able to demonstrate that protons decay, which is why physicists are building another machine called the Hyper Kamiokande, even bigger than the Super Kamiokande. If you like this video, I'm sure you're gonna love this one. See you there.